Hi, I'm Vishaka and welcome to my channel. If you're starting your cloud journey, here's something most people get wrong. They watch numerous tutorials, sign up for cloud credits and spin up services across different cloud providers like GCP, AWS, OCI, etc. And still wonder why it's not helping them land a job. Here's the truth. The recruiters do not care if you have used these services in different cloud providers. But what they do care about is what's on your resume and how you have structured it. Now, there are two sections in your resume. One is the the work experience, the other one is the project section. Work experience basically tells if you have been working in a project within an enterprise or an organization, so it shows that you have real world hands on skills. On the other hand, your projects, it's basically any portfolio projects you have built during college or during freelancing. If you have both, great. But if you're very early in your cloud journey right now, it's difficult to get the work experience. So the portfolio project section is the one that will help you stand out. That's exactly what this video is all about. So I'll be sharing five beginner friendly cloud projects which are hands-on practical skills that are in demand right now and will really help you boost your resume. Now the way I have selected each of these projects is across the core architecture patterns that recruiters and hiring managers actually look for. These are automating pipelines, event-driven architectures, serverless, AI-driven workflows, etc. etc. You have already heard a lot about it. Each project is selected based on the core buckets that recruiters and hiring managers really look for. Now, I'll tell you about the main buckets first. The number one bucket is CICD, aka continuous integration and continuous delivery. Yeah, you might have heard a lot about it, but it's basically the automation pipelines that helps ship your code from commit to production. The second bucket is containerization. You know how Kubernetes is shining everywhere, even currently in the AI era. This bucket is all about it. The third bucket is infrastructure provisioning. You might have heard about tools like Terraform, Pulumi. If not, this is the bucket you need to focus on as well. The number fourth bucket and also the most crucial one is observability. What does cloud logging does? What is cloud monitoring? How does alerting and tracing works? This is all what you will be focusing on for this bucket. The fifth one is AI Ops. It is basically using AI to improve the basic IT operational tasks. So before we move into the projects, this is how I am going to break it into. First, I will tell you which bucket it fills in, the core objective or the problem it's solving, the tech stack as well as the steps you need to follow in order to implement the project. Plus, I will tell you how much time it should take you to build this project. Depends on like which level you are on. If you're a beginner, it might take you longer. Intermediate learners may be able to build it sooner. I will also tell you what will not work for these projects because this is the most crucial thing. You sign up for projects, you start building and things fail and then you stop and then you do not complete it. So for each of these projects, I will tell you what would be the breakpoints or basically where you will try to just give up on it. In addition, I will be sharing the GitHub repos for each of these projects. But again, a disclaimer, things might break. So you have to be patient. And if you stay till the end, I will give you two additional projects that will boost your portfolio, especially now in 2025. So make sure you hit subscribe and let's dive in. So the first project we will be diving into is a two-tier web app deployed using Docker and Jenkins. This particular project fills in the CI CD bucket. Now it's a two-tier web app. So the main problem we are solving through this project is automating the pipeline and reducing the manual effort. When I say reducing the manual effort is basically when you push the code, it should be able to automatically trigger a series of steps. And once all these tests pass, it gets deployed to the production server. This is the automation pipeline we will be implementing through this project. The tech stack is pretty simple. Since it's a two-tier application, we will have a front-end and a database. For the front-end, we are using a Flask-based web app. It's a lightweight Python web framework. For this project, you don't have to understand how to write the code. You can watch a few tutorials to understand how Flask app works. For the database layer, we will be using MySQL database. It will help with storing and retrieving data. For the DevOps workflow, we will have GitHub for storing our code. Then we will be using Docker to package application and database, Docker Compose to run multiple containers, and the main component of this project is Jenkins. Jenkins is the continuous integration tool which will help you set up all the stages and will help you deploy your Flask application. And the whole project will be deployed in an AWS environment. So the main flow of this particular project is that you will be setting up your AWS environment. You should be familiar around the basic services that's a part of the AWS ecosystem. Try launching an EC2 server, select an OS type. It could be Ubuntu, Windows or Linux. Select a cost efficient machine type so that you don't burn your free credits. Be familiar with setting up security groups, ports, etc. Once you are done with this step, the second step is basically installing all these services like Docker, Docker Compose, 
Gen Canes and other dependencies. Once you have checked the status of all the services running in that EC2 server, once this is done, you can configure the Jenkins UI to connect with a GitHub repo. Now, to see things in action, whenever code is pushed to the GitHub repo, Jenkins detects that change, clones that repo into that EC2 instance, builds a Docker image of the Flask app, and in the next stage, Docker Compose will spin up two containers. One is the Flask app, and the second one is MySQL database. Once that's done, Jenkins will run some integration tests to make sure the Flask app is able to communicate with MySQL container. Since both of these containers are running in the same EC2 instance, you should be able to test the connection. And after you're done with all of these things, you can access the app on port 5000. Now, there would be a lot of gotchas. Your Jenkins build might fail a bunch of times. You can see it in the Jenkins UI page. You can see what are the build logs and what's causing the failure. It could be permission issues or some communication errors. So be patient here. Also, in the GitHub repo, you can also check if people have reported any other issues while deploying this application. For the time investment here, if you are new, it might take you longer because you will be going through a bunch of documentations. Then you have to understand how to write or how to interpret this Jenkins configuration files. You have to spend some time in understanding how to read docker file as well as the jenkins configuration file in terms of investment if you are using the aws free credits great make sure to set up alerts in case your credits expire you should be notified before otherwise you're paying out of pocket that's it for this project number two project is a three-tier web application and it's deployed using kubernetes this project helps you fill the containerization bucket the objective is simple. You're basically getting some hands-on experience on Kubernetes and understanding how microservices work. If you have not heard about the word microservices, it's basically you're running isolated services independent of each other as compared to a monolithic architecture where you are running everything together. And if one service fails, your app dies. In terms of the tech stack for this project, you will be using React.js as the UI layer, Node.js for the backend APIs and MongoDB as the NoSQL database. You will be using Docker to package each of these tiers, Kubernetes to run the microservices and also handle the scalability and security part of it. If need be, you can also use Helm. It's a package manager that simplifies repetitive YAML configs. Apart from that, you will be using other Kubernetes objects like ingress, persistent volumes, services, deployments, etc. The flow of this project is pretty simple, but on a high level, you will be deploying images for all the three tiers, that is front-end, back-end, and database. And once your images are built using Docker, now you will be writing Kubernetes manifest, or you can use Helm, which will give you all these predefined manifests, and you will be running them in form of deployments that will spin up pods. Again, pods is the smallest deployable unit in Kubernetes. You can think of it like individual processes that it runs, and containers comes under pods. It used to confuse me all the time because I was familiar with containers first, so I don't understand like pods and containers a lot of times, but you will understand once you deploy more. Once you have applied those Kubernetes manifests, you will see three deployments, and then you can further check the pods deployed using those deployments. Now you can expose these pods using services. It could be a node port service or an ingress service. Again, if you don't understand these objects, don't be scared. These are all Kubernetes specific jargons. Don't worry, once you're familiar with Kubernetes, you will get a hang of it. But since we have limited time for this video, we will move on to the next thing. Once you have deployed the persistent volume services, deployments, ingress, everything, you can check the connection between these microservices. Like if frontend is able to communicate with the backend APIs, also if backend is communicating with the database layer. The outcome of this project is pretty simple. You understand the multi-tier infrastructure running on Kubernetes. Also, you will be able to test few things around why Kubernetes shines here. Now, a thing to note is in the previous project, we used Docker Compose, but in this project, we use Kubernetes. So if you have both of these projects in your resume, make sure you understand the difference. With Docker Compose also, you can run multi-container applications and even Kubernetes helps you do that. Kubernetes helps you orchestrate and manage containers. So you should be able to explain the difference why Kubernetes shines. If you want to learn more, stay tuned. I will be releasing a video more specific to Kubernetes. But moving on, again, there will be a few gotchas here. If you have to check if you have configured the right ports, because if you haven't, you may also see some crash loop back of errors, some memory kills, et cetera, et cetera. So be patient. Again, check the GitHub issues if you see anything with this particular project. Time investment should take you six to eight hours to get the whole application ready if you're a beginner, but only if you understand the other services and tools used for this project. Use your favorite cloud provider, free credits available. There's an option for free credits for each. Third project we will be discussing now 
cloud infrastructure using an IAC tool like Terraform. This project is filling our infrastructure provisioning bucket. So basically you are creating an entire environment using a tool named Terraform. For this project, we are using Azure as the cloud provider, but Terraform is cloud agnostic. So if you understand how to write the scripts, you should be able to test the same workflows in any cloud provider. For the tech stack, you're using Terraform as the declarative IAC tool. The language used for Terraform is called HCL. There's a proper syntax for writing the code for the infrastructure using Terraform. So if you are aware of this tool called CloudFormation, which is an AWS specific IAC tooling, you may be familiar with the writing scripts using JSON or YAML. Terraform is a bit different in the syntax, but you should be able to map it. Now, just a disclaimer, HCL is not a programming language, but it has a different syntax. So you have to become familiar with it in order to use this tool. Now, again, since we are deploying in cloud, be familiar with one of the cloud provider. For this project, you will be using Azure Cloud. You should be able to understand different services like compute, storage, networking, etc. You can also use Azure DevOps, which will help you automate certain workflows. So like deploying the networking layer using Terraform. For this project, you will also come across Argo CD, which helps in GitOps deployment. Now, if you do not know about what GitOps does, it basically uses this Argo CD operator to keep clusters in sync with your GitHub repo. We will dive in in our future videos. But the main focus of this particular project is to understand how Terraform works, like how you can write repeatable configurations using modules, use functions, understand like the life cycle from init, plan, apply, destroy, all those things. So the flow of this particular project is pretty simple. You will be writing the configuration scripts to deploy VMs, security, to provision resource groups, VMs, storage layer, networking layer, etc. And when I say layers, you're basically like, you know, you might have heard about VPC, security group, access control list, all these things which are common in all the cloud providers, you will be writing in form of code. The reason Terraform is used so that you do not have to go to the console and manually click each service and then connect or make sure they communicate with each other. Terraform does that for you. The goal of this project is that you get the end-to-end -end experience using Terraform. Like I said, you can pick any of the cloud provider and use Terraform documentation to write script or provision infrastructure. When you're going through this project, make sure you're giving enough time to go through this tool and the benefits around it, like writing modules so you can use repeatable configs, how state management works, local versus remote state management. This is an interview question. Also, how Terraform can help you with drift detection. Now, this project may take you some time because Terraform is not easy. And if you're not familiar with any other IAC tool in the market, like again, CloudFormation, Pulumi, etc., then Terraform can look scary. But trust me, it will be worth your time. It's one of the most in-demand tool and you have no idea how it integrates with other buckets like CI, CD and containerization, as well as observability and AI ops. So Terraform is the tool that binds everything together in this AI era. In terms of investment, Terraform is open source, but you have to connect it with one of the providers and there could be some kind of authentication or provider issues. So make sure you go through the setup steps properly. Now the fourth project, deploying a Prometheus observability stack in Azure. For this project, you're deploying the complete monitoring stack. This is filling in the observability, our fourth bucket. For this project, you will again be using Terraform and your preferred cloud provider. For this particular GitHub repo that I will be sharing with you, it's based on Azure and you will be using Prometheus. It's our monitoring solution that helps you collect app metrics like CPU, RAM, disk usage, etc and also helps you detect what's causing the slowness or throughput issues in your application. Prometheus works pretty well with Grafana. It's the visualization dashboard where you can see everything, charts and graphs. It's pretty good to see things visually just so that you can give an RCA. You will also be using Alert Manager that will help you send notifications whenever there is an issue detected. First of all, you will be using Terraform to deploy a Kubernetes cluster. Then you will be using Helm to deploy these three tools, Prometheus, Grafana and Alert Manager. Now, these are in form of deployments, like we did it in our second project. Remember, we deployed different microservices. So all these tools will be deployed in the same manner. Once that's done, you can configure Prometheus to scrape the targets. The targets would be your web application. And that web application would be deployed in the same Kubernetes cluster or could be in a different cluster. You can set up the authentication there. You can set up the Grafana dashboard to monitor the app metrics. And then you have to run some load testing in order to trigger the alerts. So for instance, 
your application is overloaded with incoming user requests that you can test through load testing. CPU utilization would increase if it reaches a certain threshold and you can see it in your Grafana dashboard as well. It will send an alert to the on-call team. The outcome of this project is amazing. First, you will understand the whole integration, how it works. You will be using the infrastructure provisioning tool Terraform, you're using containerization, you will be using Kubernetes, then you're using the three most in-demand tools, Prometheus, Grafana, Alert Manager. Also, Alert Manager is part of Prometheus. Investment piece, free credits again through the cloud provider, but there's a high chance you might surpass those credits. So keep an eye. Just make sure to destroy the cluster once you have tested everything. The fifth project is AI Assisted DevOps. You're basically combining LLMs and DevOps tools to build this AI powered system and help with debugging, troubleshooting and monitoring. The objective or the focus area of this project to automate DevOps workflows, do monitoring, help with incident responses, and also provide recommendations. The tech stack here is Python. It is the lightweight scripting language that helps you integrate LLMs and DevOps tools. You're also using large language models. For this, you can either use Hugging Face APIs or OpenAI APIs and DevOps tools, CI CD pipeline. The alert manager will notify the AI agent. Also in the tech stack, you will be using a chatbot. LLMs here would help you with summarizing logs, find errors, through natural language and even recommend fixes. So for the flow, whenever anything breaks, for instance, there's some error during the build stage, the alert manager will notify the AI agent, which will interpret the logs and suggest next steps. This errors could be anything if there's a requirement to restart pods or restart deployments, or if there are any memory leaks. The AI agent would do that work for you. Now, for this project, it's not as easy as you think. Again, it has AI. There is an element of human in the loop. You cannot trust the system as it is. So Grafana will help you do that. You can use Grafana dashboards to compare the system metrics versus the AI suggested steps just for validation purposes. The outcome of this project is pretty evident. You are using AI to automate DevOps workflows and basically bridging traditional observability with AI-based intelligence. Is investment is again the same. Cloud credits and most of the LLM APIs are free. And for the LLM models, you can use the free tier with the Hugging Face APIs. But there are also paid tiers, so make sure you're reviewing that properly. Now, those were five projects. Since you're still here, here are the two bonus projects that you can look into. The first bonus project is AI-driven predictive scaling. So for this project, you're using Keda, aka Kubernetes event-driven auto-scaling, where basically you use ML models to predict scaling events before it actually happens. So it tracks the usage metrics, etc. So it will help you predict traffic spikes in advance. The second one is a beginner-friendly MLOps project. Now, if you're not aware what MLOps is, so it's basically DevOps workflows applied to machine learning workloads. So there are different steps for MLOps. In my next few videos, I will walk you through the differences between MLOps and DevOps in detail. Now that's it for today. These beginner friendly projects will help you go from theory to having something that you have hands on experience with. Just one tip, do not copy paste the code that you get from the GitHub repos because in that way you're not really learning. The way it has worked for me is I do these projects two to three times. I deploy, I destroy, I deploy, I destroy. Every time I deploy a project or I implement certain steps, it helps me understand why I'm using this particular tool. It's like, why will I use Jenkins over some cloud-based CI tool, right? So it just helps you understand the process a little better. Plus, if you break something when you're implementing these projects, be thankful. Troubleshooting teaches you more than anything. And during the interviews, it is the troubleshooting scenarios that will help you pass that interview. So make sure you do that. Another tip here is make sure you have your own GitHub repo. So all these projects that you're deploying it, make sure you push it to that repo and have a beautiful written readme. The reason I'm saying this is recruiters and hiring managers love clicking. So if they see something like that in your repo, you have a good architecture diagram, you show the flow like end to end flow to them. It's gold. Hope that helps. Now, if you found this video insightful, do like it and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you have any doubts or concerns or queries across these projects, make sure you drop that in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer them. Thanks for watching. And as always, good job. We